What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today, subreddit is r slash I don't work here lady. This story's called, I am not a bouncer and I didn't steal your money. Hi all, I've had the misfortune to experience a lot of things in my 30 odd years that Redditors may enjoy. I'll start with one that made me laugh when my friend reminded me about it last night and can add more if there is some interest. Been watching a few of these groups for a while and occasionally they remind me of my own experiences. I should probably introduce myself. I'm a male from the UK, late 30s now, and I'm quite tall at 6 foot 4, which seems to make me stand out enough that I am either a target or just the person who catches the eye of lunatics quite a lot. Here's the cast for this tale. There's me, hi, Phil, my friend who reminded me about this story, Drunk Girls 1 through 6, a group of drunk girls who made a small mistake but couldn't get past it. Bouncer. A big fella, not too bright though. Manager. Nice bloke, sorts it all out. Here we go. The language is as best as I remember, but I had been drinking, so exact words are going to be a stretch. A few years ago, I was hanging around drinking outside a bar in Manchester with my friend Phil. My friend smokes, but I don't. You mostly need to go outside to designated smoking areas to smoke in the UK. As I'm stood there talking to my friend, admittedly quite near the door to the bar, a small group of very drunk girls gather in front of me. I don't really notice for a few moments as I'm talking, but after a short while, I pick up that there is a little crowd stumbling about in front of me, and they are looking a bit agitated, lots of huffing and tutting. I looked over them briefly and noticed they were all carbon copy blondes with the same haircut. Not a Karen cut, sadly. Mid-30s, similar black outfits, very short dresses, all quite overweight, no judgment, just an observation, and all drunk like it was their first time out on the town. The only thing separating them was the level of fake tan they had gone for. It ranged from orange to a kind of mahogany color. I am oblivious as to why they are standing there or who they might think I am at this point, but I assume I am in the way a bit, so I move to the side away from the door and they start to enter the bar with a few slurred variations of FINALLY and FREAKING USELESS. It seems obvious now that they thought I was the bouncer or doorman who had to let them in, but at the time, I just thought I must have been in their way a bit. There didn't seem to be a bouncer, as it was a quiet night, so an easy mistake to make. I should also mention, it was cold and rainy in Manchester. It usually is. So I was wearing a big coat. It was dark in color, but wasn't the usual bouncer uniform of black coat with SIA identification on the sleeves. SIA is Security Industry Authority, if memory serves. I actually did work door security for a couple of years at student bars and clubs in the past, so I know a little bit about this, but that was years ago. Most bouncers tend to be quite big guys as it's a physical job when crap goes down with fighting and such, and I'm in that category because of my height and build. A few minutes pass and four of the girls stumble out of the bar again and make a beeline right for me. I wasn't as close to the door anymore, but I was still outside with my friend. The leader of this gaggle was massively drunk and had obviously been elected as that night's spokesperson. She will be drunk girl one. She did most of the speaking or slurring, and the rest mostly just said supportive things to back her up and swore. You need to come on and save my friends. Sorry, what? Come on then, they're in trouble. She grabs my arm, which surprised me a bit. Still oblivious, I say, who's in trouble? I also pull my arm away, which seems to annoy her. Come with me now, my friends are being attacked. She grabs my arm again. You better go, sounds important. He was laughing as he had figured out the problem already. Okay? Confused as I still don't get it, but I was just drunk enough to think they might be trying to be funny or pick me up or something. Finally, quick! Drunk girls two, three, and four all say, yeah, hurry. 
She leads me into the bar and up to a sort of dance floor area where the other two girls are dancing with and kissing two guys. I'm still a bit confused why I'm here and now notice that drunk girls 1 through 4 are staring at me expectantly. So what am I doing here? Drunk girl 1 shouting over the music, Kick those guys out of here, they're talking my friends! Seems like they're okay to me. Why did you drag me here? Well, our girl's not out and these guys aren't even with us. Ah, oh, we don't even know them. Okay, but why would I need to be involved? Drunk girl 1 ups the drama a bit. That beat us so I need just one freaking watch! Uh, no, I don't really care. I'm going back outside now. I turn to walk out. Drunk girl 1 shrieks something sweary at me and tries to slap me in the face. She misses, spins, and hits the floor. I am walking away and out now, and when I turn, having taken the few steps to get back to the door, Drunk Girl 1 is stumbling to her feet and struggling a bit. I walk outside and hope that's all the weirdness I'll have tonight. I find Phil, who is laughing at me, having watched the drama from the floor. You're not free yet! I think you're in trouble now! He motions toward the door. The four girls have found a real bouncer who must have been inside and are pointing me out looking furious. They come over and they are halfway through their version of the story to the real bouncer. That's the one, that's the bouncer who refused to freaking help us and then knock me over. He needs to be freaking sucked. This guy? Pointing to me. Things suddenly clicking in my head. Wait, bouncer? Do you think I'm a bouncer? Yes, you, of course, you assin. He doesn't work here. Yes, he does. Don't even know each other. No, I don't work here. I'm stood here with a pint in my hands. Why do you think I work here? You're dressed as a bouncer and you let us in. By wearing a dark jacket? I didn't let you in. I just moved out of your way when you went in. You came inside with us to sort out those guys. Why would you do that if you don't work here? You didn't give me much time to think. Before I knew it, you grabbed me and pulled me inside. Hang on a bit. I'm lost. Look, he's the bouncer. Black jacket, security information on his sleeve, and he's got the radio and all that. Look at me. I'm just stood here with a beer in my hand. Screw yes, I don't care what you are, you put, you, you pushed me to the ground and took my money. She starts doubling down a little as I presume she thought this would help her. I never touched you. I laughed after you pointed out some people kissing and you tried to slap me, missed and fell over. What money are you talking about? I thought the mention of money was a bit random. We paid you to get in. They obviously didn't. It wasn't even a bar you paid to get in. Bouncer looks very lost, but seems to be getting an idea that he better react soon. So you hit her and took the money off her? No, none of this happened. I think this lot are a bit drunk. Drunk girls one through four all chime in with various, Yes, they freaking hit her and stole her purse. Again, another fun little addition. Right, give the purse back. What purse? I don't have a purse. This is all bullcrap. Bouncer speaks into the radio and another bouncer has now shown up. He says he's going to look at the cameras and see what's what. I'm lucky it was a relatively quiet night as normally, I think I'd have just been kicked out of the place just to stop the drama and save time, but as it was slow, they decided to investigate. The drunk girls have all started getting a bit hysterical now that they have the real bouncers, and the story has been embellished to include me taking money off them at the door to let them in, which they want back of course. The fact I apparently gave this poor girl a bit of a kicking and I was supporting the guys who were trying to assault their friends. It takes a few minutes, but just as they are whipping themselves up into a frenzy, the bar manager comes out and asks me if I'll go inside to speak to him. I just want to go home now, but as it will get me away from the screeching, I agree. I instantly regret it as I get shepherded into the back of the bar to the little room the security guys use. I assume I'm going to get a kicking, but the manager gets the second bouncer to show me the two clips on the security screen. 
The first one shows me vaguely moving out of the way when they go in the bar, definitely not taking any money. And the second shows me inside the bar talking briefly to drunk girl one, her going to slap me and tripping herself up. We have a little laugh and they say I'm fine. I say I'm going to go, but they suggest if the woman calls the police, it might be better to hang around so it can be sorted out with this evidence. Apparently, it's quite common for people to lose things like purses and try to blame others in pubs. I ask what they're going to do with the group of girls, and they say they are going to be asked to leave. We go back outside, and the girls are still going on about what I apparently did. When the manager asks them to leave, they go really mad for a few seconds, protesting. I've looked at the CCTV, and this guy didn't do anything. You actually tried to hit him. I never! He freaking shot me and stole my freaking purse! I'll call the police! Well, feel free, but as I said, I've got the footage, so you will make yourself look a bit silly. No, I won't! I bet you do this all the time! Rob people and share money! You've been asked to leave, so please go! I'm not going until he gives me my purse back! I don't have it! Are you sure you didn't drop it when you fell over? I did smirk a bit here, which may have been an error. You swarmy little cooter! She launches herself at me, but the bouncer with reflexes like a cheetah manages to catch her in mid-air and holds her there. This was no mean feat, as she was a pretty large girl. She starts kicking and screaming, but it doesn't seem to trouble him too much. He holds her there for a few seconds as she runs out of steam. Drunk girls 2 through 4 slowly seem to realize it isn't going to work and quiet down and seem to sink back a bit to get away. As Drunk Girl 1 catches her breath, the two girls, 5 and 6, who had been inside and really hadn't been involved to this point, come out of the bar arm in arm with the two guys. Hi, Karen. Not her real name, as of course it was actually Chantel or something chavy. <laughs> We've bumped into our fellas, so we're heading home. Have a good night. Oh, by the way, here's the purse you asked me to hold. They hand over the purse, which she takes very sheepishly, and drunk girls five and six leave with the guys. The remaining girls have all but disappeared now, and it appears the show is over. Bouncer releases Drunk Girl 1 and again asks them to leave. They seem a bit defeated and slink away apart from Drunk Girl 1, who is hanging back a bit. She turns to me and looks at me for a second. I was expecting an apology for the misunderstanding or a final flip you, but she actually says to me, Will we get in next week? Sorry, what do you mean? We aren't bored, are we? Bouncer and manager look at each other and shake their heads a little. Not sure why she still thinks I work there. Seizing an opportunity, I say, You are, I'm afraid. Your friends can come back anytime, though. Manager deciding it's easier to go with me on this one now. Yes, that's right. I'm afraid we can't have people assaulting the staff. If you leave now, we won't call the police. She then joins the rest of her troop and they dejectedly walk away and leave the smoking area in the bar with a bit of muttering. Bouncer looking a bit confused. So hang on, do you work here or not? No, sorry mate, just stood in the wrong place at the wrong time. I was just taking the piss out of her at the end. Okay, so how come she's barred? Don't worry about it, just get a picture of the video and put her on the wall of shame. Presuming this is how they track the troublemakers. Right, all sorted. Talking to me now. Can I get you a drink for all the trouble? Better not, boss. Not while I'm working. Cue a wry smile from the manager and a bit of laughter from the few people who had gathered around and had picked up on what was going on. Sadly, everyone didn't stop and clap, but it was enough for me. Phil and I got a free round of drinks out of it, and I still go to that bar every now and then to this day. Wow, that was really long in the end. I never could figure out why they wanted the friends' boyfriends to be kicked out. I presume it was just because a girl's night out is sacred and they didn't like the intrusion. But this seems extreme. Thanks for reading and sorry it didn't end with the police being called and a Karen or a group of Karens all getting carted off to the cells. 
Have a great day, everyone. As I said, I've got a few of these. If people are keen, I can add some more when I get the time. Ah, that bouncer was really trying there. <laughs> Thank goodness they took the time to investigate because if they didn't, it could have ended poorly for OP here, but it worked out in the end, so that's all good. This story's called, Woman Grabs My Girlfriend and I Snap. So, me and my girlfriend were out just trying to enjoy our day. So we go to a local bookstore. It's a small place and the owners are friends of my girlfriend's family and we help out every now and again so we have a key to get in when they're closed. A woman sees us opening the door and asks if we're open. I tell her we're just running errands for the owners and that the store isn't open. She gets upset at me, demanding we let her in, saying, It's just me! You're not gonna get sick from one person! Or some crap like that. My girlfriend tries to tell her that we can't let anyone in because then we have to let everybody in and we're not the owners. So the woman goes to snatch the key from my girlfriend and grabs her wrist. My girlfriend is having a panic attack. I should mention my girlfriend has PTSD and anxiety issues. So I grab the woman's wrist and pressure point her to get her to let go of my girlfriend and shove her and start berating her using some pretty colorful language. She tackles me and I punch her. Cops are called by some passers-by, I guess, and they come over and tear her off of me and ask what the hell happened. Woman tries to argue that we assaulted her and that she was just trying to pick up a book for her son. We tell him to check the cameras for the store because we know there are cameras watching the door that see almost into the street. He proceeds to arrest the woman. I get a warning to not be so aggressive next time and my foster's called. I'm 16. Now I'm grounded for fighting and can't leave the house for a month. Well, that's kind of whack. I feel like the parents should be understanding when they're doing it in defense of themselves and their girlfriend. Anyway, that's a cool story. Um, I know you guys in the comments are going to enjoy uh, Karen getting a face full of knuckles. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.